This is the second video in our fact checking the FWC series. A couple years ago, we made a video showing the FWC spraying snail kite habitat in North Cove of Lake Kissimmee. The video went viral and we got a lot of attention, so the FWC was forced to put out a statement that said, without these treatments, snail kites would not be able to forage in this area due to nuisance vegetation. The snail kites are now able to make use of this newly opened areas to feed. The nuisance vegetation they are referring to is water hyacinths. This statement has been echoed by all of the FWC puppets. This is Ed Harris. He is the biologist in charge of the Kissimmee chain of lakes. There have been some cases where we have specifically been requested to manage those plants to assist uh, in opening up some of the snail pack foraging areas. See how this works? All of the FWC puppets have pre-programmed responses, so all you are doing is listening to one person, the puppet master, which is Eric Sutton. The snail kites have only one food, the apple snail. There are a few things that you need to know about the apple snail. First, even though it lives underwater, it needs to come to the surface to breathe air. Since it can't swim, it has to climb up onto something to get to the surface. That is when the snail kites catch it when it comes to the surface to get a breath. Secondly, the apple snail eggs also have to breathe. So when the apple snail lays its eggs, it has to do so above the water so they don't suffocate. The apple snail needs plant stems so that they can climb up and breathe and lay their eggs on. They like spatter dock because it has nice thick stems strong enough to support their weight. But the plant that they really love is water hyacinth. It is the perfect snail plant because it floats on the surface and provides plenty of food because it constantly sheds its leaves and that is what the snails eat. So the snails ride around all day on an all-you-can-eat buffet. So you see, the snails cannot live out in the open like the FWC wants you to believe. They have to live on plants. And when they spray these plants, they kill the only food of this critically endangered bird, which is against the law. Scott and I have documented what the spraying does to snail eggs. It kills them. These eggs on the, oh, the eggs on the outside are, oh, oh, they're done. They're done. These eggs will never hatch. They will never hatch. Again, the burnt white, light pink color, then look on to the inside. Look how it, it where, where, and you can see how far the chemical penetrated into that bunch of eggs. And those eggs are dead. They're done. Just what feeds our snail kites. It's Watch this snail kite as it scours the surface of the water looking for snails. It spots one and swoops down and picks it up. As you can see, this is a dense spatter dock with hyacinth mixed in. The snail was obviously getting a breath of air when this kite grabbed it. Check this snail kite out. It is hunting over its favorite hunting grounds, water hyacinth. It doesn't have any trouble spotting its prey and swoops down. It comes up empty handed, but it doesn't take any time before it sees another snail. What do you know? It got one. Hey, Eric Sutton, does this look like open water to you? No, it is a dense water body of nuisance vegetation. You know, the place where you said snail kites can't forage? I want to take you to Payne's Prairie, more specifically, Alachua Sink, an area at the north end of the prairie. The water hyacinth here is thicker than any place that I've ever been, and I have been to a lot of lakes in this state. The trail stretches what seems to be a mile out in the lake, which is completely covered with water hyacinths, or as the FWC calls them, nuisance vegetation. They are so thick, it looks like an open field of weeds, but it is not. It is hundreds of acres of water hyacinths floating on the water. Everywhere you look, there are hundreds of snails piled up on the banks. These water hyacinths are home to millions of snails. We saw dozens of limpkins walking around these floating plants catching snails. Dr. Bob Knight told us that there was over a thousand limpkins counted in Payne's Prairie, more than anywhere in the state. There is only one reason why these limpkins are here. It is because of all the water hyacinth is the perfect habitat for their only food, the apple snail. 
I didn't go there to see limpkins. I went there to see snail kites, and I couldn't believe what I saw. I witnessed a natural phenomenon. The wind was blowing the floating plants around and exposing thousands of snails that live underneath these water hyacinths. There were dozens of snail kites gorging themselves on all sorts of snails. There is nowhere in Florida where you can see this many snail kites in one area. I counted over 20 snail kites circling over this water hyacinth and every one was catching snails. They were even stealing snails from each other. The reason this bird is critically endangered is because we have decimated water hyacinths, which is the prime habitat for this endangered bird's only food, the apple snail. If we just stop spraying these important plants, we could all enjoy this beautiful sight on every lake in this state. This is truly a one-of-a-kind experience. I have no idea who wrote this crap about snail kites needing open water to forage in, but they clearly don't understand a thing about snail kites. So Eric Sutton, since you are the puppet master of this screwed up organization, for lying to us about snail kites foraging in open water, you get the Pinocchio Nose Award this week, so congratulations. <laughs>